allylic or benzylic bromination using NBS. This lesson, we're going to focus on this one reaction. We're going to find out why if you're brominating allylically or benzylically that you really should be using NBS instead of Br2. And, and then finally, we'll take a detailed look at the mechanism uh, of NBS bromination as well. Now this lesson is part of my new organic chemistry playlist and I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the 2020-21 school year. So if you want to be notified every time I release a new lesson or any of my subsequent playlists I'll be coming out with later, subscribe to the channel and click that bell notification. All right, so using NBS, and NBS here is going to stand for N-bromosuccinamide, and we'll take a closer look at what that reagent looks like when we get to the mechanism here. So. But the idea is that if you are trying to brominate specifically on that allylic carbon here, so then you should use NBS, not Br2. Now, I show both of these as forming the desired product. So then again, why don't we use Br2? Well, because you're also going to form some other product as well. Now, if we take a look at a real quick at the intermediate involved here, if we want to brominate right on this carbon, then somewhere along the way, we would have formed that lovely allylic radical. And so that's kind of what's governing this, is we have a chance to form a fairly stable radical, a resident stabilized radical, when we do allylic bromination. If you recall, bromination is very selective, and it's all about forming the most stable radical you can. And tertiaries were more stable than secondary, and secondary is more than primary, explaining why we uh, have a, a strong preference with bromination for those tertiaries, if possible, and stuff. So, well, in this case, it turns out bromination would still likely occur in the same place using Br2. However, there are other reactions that would be possible as well. So you could still form this lovely radical intermediate and still get this product. However, you guys learned that Br2 can add across an alkene in one of your alkene addition reactions. And so besides our desired allylic product, we also get this addition product. So besides the desired substitution product where we replaced an allylic hydrogen, you also get this alkene addition product as well. And so as a result, you're not going to get the greatest yield of the desired product because of the presence of these side products. Well, it turns out with NBS, we don't have to worry about that. So for one, we don't actually use any Br2 in the reaction. So at least we don't add any Br2 in there. So we're actually going to create our own Br2 using the NBS that we provide, and we're going to create it in such a low concentration that we never get this lovely alkene addition side product. The Br2 is created in such a small amount that any of it that's created only undergoes allylic or benzylic bromination. Cool. Now, one other thing I want to focus on here, so we, we talked about this lovely resonant stabilized radical that we form, and I want to draw both resonant structures here real quick. So, and this thing is symmetrical. It doesn't matter which of these two lovely radical uh, resonant structure you use. You could brominate on this carbon or you could brominate on this carbon, but due to the symmetry, it would lead you to the exact same product. Notice just draw bromine off of this and that's just the same molecule rotated 180 degrees. And so as long as the radical we form, that radical intermediate is symmetrical, you know, we just get one product. So however, that's not always gonna be the case. So for example, So once again, we're wanting to brominate allylically, and we find that we've got an allylic carbon right here and an allylic carbon right there, and they're equivalent. So, and it looks like then, okay, great. Then we should expect to get, whether I attach the bromine here or here, it's the same thing. So I'm gonna attach it right here. And it looks like, you know, not, you know, same thing we've done and stuff like that, except we're actually gonna get an additional product that maybe we didn't anticipate here. So if we look at the radical intermediate that we form along the way, putting the bromine on this carbon, then we had to get a radical right here. And if we look at our two resonant structures, this is one of them. But the other one is going to look like this. And so we see that that radical is actually shared between two different carbons. And that's why we're actually going to get two different regioisomer products here in this case as well. So not only do we get this product, but we could add the bromine right off of this carbon as well. And get that guy. So there's the alkenes in a totally different location and the bromine is attached to a totally different carbon. And this one turns out as a chiral center as well. So technically you'd get a pair of enantiomers here. This first bromination wasn't a chiral center, so we'd have to worry about that here. But this one is, so I'll just take the time to draw them both out to be explicit. 
And so all of a sudden we've now predicted a pair of enantiomers, some additional products that maybe we didn't initially expect. And again, you only have to, you, you got to actually draw out that lovely radical intermediate and draw the resonance structures to be actually to be able to predict that other product. So a lot of times we'll give you something fairly symmetrical where the two resonance structures are symmetrically, you know, it's such a symmetrical molecule that the two resonance structures are equivalent. It didn't matter which one you choose to brominate using, it's going to lead you to the same exact product. But oftentimes with NBS, we'll give you something else. And a lot of students struggle to predict that second product. But the key is draw your radical. So leading to the product that you expect and then show the other resonant structure as well. Being a lilic, it's going to have another resonant structure. All right, so from here, we just want to take a, a little closer look at the mechanism of a lilic or benzylic bromination with NBS. So let's take a look at that mechanism. So this is N-bromosuccinamide. I've spelled it out over here. And uh, this part of it is this succinamide. It's an imide, it turns out, similar to an amide, but with a couple of carbonyls here. And, uh, and the N-bromo part refers to the fact that the bromine is attached to the nitrogen. And it is that bond that we're going to break and use it to form radicals in a little bit to get this party started. Now, one thing you should note, we said that we don't actually add any Br2. Well, we're going to form some HBr along the way in our mechanism. And it turns out that some of your N-bromosuccinamide, some of your NBS is going to react with some of that HBr to form form just a little bit of Br2 at a very slow rate. And that's where we're going to actually get the Br2 that's going to be involved in our mechanism. So we're going to work this mechanism out. And had I not shown you where the Br2 was created, you might have been like, well, where'd you get the Br2, Chad? We never added it. Precisely the point. Because we're only slowly generating a, a small amount of Br2, that's again why we avoid those alkene addition side products uh, using NBS. All right. So just like with our other free radical halogenations, we got to get this party started. We got to do an initiation. We got to create some radicals. And in this case, again, light, heat, or a peroxide uh, or some other radical chain uh, initiator is going to work. And again, light's the most common. And in this case, we're going to break this nitrogen bromine bond. Use just the right amount, right energy of light, if you will, to cause that to happen. And that's going to create our bromine radical. And so now we've got this party started. That's our initiation reaction. So, and that's going to come and react with our allylic compound. So in this case, let's say we're doing this with this guy and I'll draw in the relevant hydrogen. So in this case, we're going to make a bond between bromine and that hydrogen. And the other half of that bond is going to come from an electron from the bond. The other electron goes back to that carbon to form a radical. Cool. Now we formed the lovely radical there. And then that radical is going to come react with one of the Br2 molecules created by that lovely step. So if you notice, we just create our HBr. That's where the HBr that comes and reacts with some more NBS comes from to react and produce some Br2 again at a slow rate. So now that radical is going to react with some Br2. Half our bond is going to come from the radical there, the other half from one of the electrons in the bond. Other electron goes to the other bromine to once again form another bromine radical. And this is where we create our product. Cool. And if you notice, we went from one radical to one radical, one radical to one radical. These are your propagation steps. They're just going to repeat over and over and over again. The bromine radical uh, we create in the second step is going to come back and find another one of our propane molecules and just keep repeating these two steps over and over and over and over again always creating your desired product right there. So these are your propagation steps. But eventually, like everything, uh, all good things come to an end and our radical party is going to end when any two radicals bump into each other. And we see we've got bromine radicals, we've got carbon radicals, We've got this lovely NBS radical. So, and we're gonna omit the NBS radical. There's just not gonna be a ton of them around. They could potentially be involved in a termination step, but it's not the most likely thing. So we're gonna leave them out, but it potentially would open the possibility to a whole host more terminations, which would not have enough room here. So, but again, it's the least likely. So we'll just say that a couple of bromine radicals could meet. That's a possibility. We could have a couple of the carbon radicals meet. Of 
forming a carbon-carbon bond in this case. Cool, when you form a carbon-carbon bond, it's really easy to lose something, so count your carbons, but one, two, three, and then one, two, three, and then there's the new bond we formed right in the middle. And then finally, we could also then have a carbon radical bump into a bromine radical. And again, technically this termination step actually forms a little bit of our, a little bit more of our desired product. But again, so little of the termination should occur relative to the amount of propagation going on. So, but these are your most likely termination steps. Cool. Word to the wise. Not all of you will be on the hook for knowing the mechanism for NVS, uh, allylic, bromine, uh, allylic benzylic bromination. So, but a fair number of you will be. So I'm definitely presenting it here. But for those of you uh, where it wasn't emphasized or even presented in your class, then this might be a good time to ignore what's going on here. So, but like I said, many of you will be on the hook for this mechanism. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? A couple of the best things you can do to help promote the channel. And if you're looking for the study guide that goes with these lessons, if you're looking for practice problems or final exam rapid review, practice final exams, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.